Hello, and welcome to the Frostburg Experience. I'm Amanda Faverty. And I'm Minuet Silver. On today's show, we will be speaking to members of Home Ground, a sustainability organization based in Allegheny County. And we will hear from Dr. Kara Rogers Thomas, FSU professor and chair of the Appalachian Festival here at Frostburg State University. We will also learn about how one FSU student has helped beautify the town of Frostburg. But first, let's learn about a few of the vast recreation opportunities that are available in Western Maryland. Here's field reporter Wayne Kiefer with more. Some of the most fun and rewarding activities in Western Maryland can be found just by going outside. This region is filled with fun outdoor activities that take advantage of the beautiful landscape that surrounds us. Rocky Gap State Park is a great place to get outside and have a good time. The Home Ground organization created a festival called Discover Allegheny Outdoors to encourage local citizens to embrace the outdoors. We spoke to Tom Matthews and Natalia Buda of Home Ground about the festival. So it's nice to see the public come out, enjoy theirself. Uh, learn about the Allegheny County, learn about the natural resources of the county, the outdoor recreational opportunities, and also to support Home Ground as an organization. For me, why I do it, and I've been doing it for four years now, it's, I ju it's just giving people a chance to come outside and really enjoy nature and connect with nature. We have this beautiful resource here, which is Rocky Gap, that we all love, and <laughs> we want to make it so that other people are loving it as well, and primarily the children. I think we kind of focus quite a bit on families with kids in terms of coming out. Located under a mile from Frostburg State University's campus is one of the most famous and scenic bike trails in the country. The Great Allegheny Passage stretches from Pittsburgh to Cumberland going through Frostburg in the process. In Cumberland, the Great Allegheny Passage connects to the CNO Canal towpath that continues on all the way to Washington, D.C. The entire journey is 334 and a half miles of peaceful trail free from motorized traffic. The trail is known nationwide for its stunning scenery. On the Great Allegheny Passage, you may stumble upon wildlife or even interesting pieces of art. For the Frostburg Experience, I'm Wayne Kiefer. Thanks, Wayne. This part of the state is truly beautiful, and there are a lot of ways to get out and appreciate all that Western Maryland has to offer. When we come back, we'll talk to a few members of Home Ground, an organization in Allegheny County that focuses on sustainability issues. Please stay tuned. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent one in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 110. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Welcome back. I'm joined in the studio by the chair of the board of directors of Home Ground, Christine Steinbrenner, and board members Tom Matthews and Natalia Buda. Welcome. Christine, you. let's start with you. Okay. What is the purpose of Home Ground as an organization? Well, Minuet, thanks for having us, first and foremost. Um, Home Ground uh, was established because we recognized a need in Allegheny County. 
in 2011, uh, the organi organization began, and it began on the basis that people love nature. So we created this, this nonprofit, fully volunteer-based organization um, to provide outdoor opportunities for people to learn about the natural resources in Allegheny County. Tom, how has home ground evolved since the beginning? Well, it started out over a cup of coffee at lunch from a couple of people that just love the outdoors and love the natural world. And, uh, you know, this county is so rich in natural resources, our streams, our forests, our wildlife. We are so blessed to be able to live in a region with so much uh, outdoor environment and nature right you know, close in, in our backyard. That's why we called it home ground because it's the ground where we all have our home on. Uh, originally, it started out as a small cadre of people, uh, very much interested in the outdoors. Uh, we're about five years into the organization now. We're very well established. We have a board of directors. Uh, we have an annual membership banquet. In fact, we just had it here about three weeks ago. We had about 60 people at our banquet. Uh, we had a gentleman from the Department of Natural Resources, a forest ecologist, who gave a wonderful, engaging talk about the endangered plants and animals of the county. Uh, but we've now probably in the last five years given, provided about 50 programs on different nature-based subjects, mm -hmm. black bears, coyotes, we do hikes, we have an outdoor festival every year at Rocky Gap State Park. So uh, the organization is very solid, very viable, we're strong, uh, we're getting more and more recognition in the community. So uh, we're very happy. Yeah. That's great. Natalia. What are your thoughts on other opportunities um, for recreation that are available in Western Maryland? The opportunities are endless. That's what <laughs> I like to say. So I moved here. I grew up in Romania. So mm -hmm. I traveled across U.S., lived in different places. And when I got here, I could see the opportunities, how many natural resources are around here where people could go and enjoy fishing, hiking, backpacking. There's so much going on. All the state parks that we have, and that's one of our big events, is at Rocky Gap State Park. Um, and there's, you can go and hike their trails, you can go and fish, you can go and get on the water and paddle. Uh, there are other parks, Deep Creek Lake uh, State yeah. Park, we have uh, New Germany State Park, so there are a lot, a lot of opportunities. Uh, and no matter of the season <laughs> either, I think there are opportunities for recreation in the summer, but also winter opportunities. I always go snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. Mm -hmm. I always find something to do, and that's what we are trying to do, let people know where the opportunities are. That's great. Mm -hmm. Tom, are there any other events um, in the region that Home Ground is involved in producing? Well, we don't really produce any events per se. Mm -hmm. uh, we have attended the Appalachian Festival here at Frostburg State uh, for the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a booth every year at the Heritage Days event in downtown Cumberland. Uh, but the heart of our organization is programming. Uh, we usually put on about six to eight programs a year. Even throughout the winter months, we have indoor programs. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our programs in winter have got 70, 75 people. I remember one winter night here at Compton on Frostburg State Campus, we had uh, Harry Spiker, Maryland's black bear biologist, and we had about 75 people come out. A very entertaining mm -hmm. evening, so, yeah. And we also do work with the, um, the Allegheny and Garrett County Bird Club. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of um, programs, um, bird sounds, and also hawk watch every fall in conjunction with them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So how do you envision the future of home ground? Well, we would, um, I'd like for all of us to, to mm -hmm. respond to that question, but we are, like I said, all volunteer based. Mm -hmm. um, and we would like to see that volunteer uh, base continue to grow mm -hmm. uh, so we can provide more programs um, and uh, become more prevalent in the community. So mm -hmm. I, that, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see the membership base grow, the volunteer base grow, mm -hmm. uh, provide programs that meet the interests mm -hmm. of, of a, a lot of different Allegheny County residents. And I will add one of the things that is on my mm -hmm. agenda okay, for, for the organization is trying to reach to groups that we haven't been serving mm -hmm. for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking families that don't get 
the time or don't have the knowledge to get outside, get outdoors, families that we did not typically reach. What uh, we've noticed in our events quite often, we get people that already know about the importance of nature in our lives and the importance of the get, getting outdoors, but we're trying to get the groups who do less of those activities mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Our focus is probably more on younger family groups mm -hmm. than older people. And we're not that we don't want anyone to come that has an interest in our program, but one of our Keystone annual summer events is out at uh, Evich Creek, where we have the kids actually get in the water with minnow sange, catch crayfish and helger mites and uh, different aquatic life and hands-on. When you can get young people engaged hands-on, you can really make a, a significant uh, mark in their brain. Yep. That's yep. great. Yep. Well, I'd like to take the time to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for having thank me. You. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next, we get festive with local events that sponsor charities, enrich the community, and promote the overall enjoyment of life and culture in Western Maryland. Field reporter Adam Brandt has more. Here in Western Maryland, there are many festivals, some of which aim to give back to the community. We visited three festivals in the region, the Art and Wine Festival in Deep Creek Lake, Maryland, the Appalachian Festival at Frostburg State University, and the Autumn Glory Festival in Oakland, Maryland. One of the organizations that benefit from the Art and Wine Festival is Heart for Animals. Heart for Animals is a nonprofit organization located in Accident, Maryland, that is dedicated to saving the lives of homeless pets in Western Maryland. We talked to Mike and Mercedes Pellet about Heart for Animals. The option came up for someone to be the uh, charity that would benefit from the Art and Wine Festival. And uh, amongst the many organizations who put in their bids, uh, Heart uh, for Animals was selected as well as GLAF, which is a, our sister organization on this um, event. Garrett Lakes Art Festival is a nonprofit organization based in Garrett County, Maryland. They are the largest performing arts organization in the county. We spoke to Mary Callis about their involvement with the Art and Wine Festival. I think this is what makes Garrett County a great place to visit and a, pla a great place to live. You can come and see how everybody in the county gets behind the nonprofits and supports each other in this great event. The Appalachian Festival is held in Frostburg, Maryland. It is comprised of many events and performances that celebrate the culture and heritage of the region. We spoke to Ken Metz, a local author, and Julie Metz, a local artist, about the festival. It's just wonderful, you know, we can come here and listen to the music and enjoy, and we can purchase all kinds of crafts and, and that, that, that we, we don't see anyplace else. This is the best, really the nicest festival that we've ever been to, I think. The Autumn Glory Festival is held in Oakland, Maryland, and is a celebration of the local fall foliage. Autumn Glory is often voted as one of the top fall festivals in the country. One of the main events of the festival is the parade that travels down the main street of the town. Other events include the farmer's market, craft sales, live music, children's activities, good food, and the pumpkin launch. For the Frostburg Experience, I'm Adam Brandt. Thanks, Adam. When we return, Amanda will be joined by Dr. Kara Rogers Thomas, who will be talking about Frostburg's annual Appalachian Festival. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today.
Welcome back. I'm joined in the studio by Dr. Kara Rogers-Thomas, the director of Frostburg State University's annual Appalachian Festival. Welcome to the show, Dr. Rogers-Thomas. Glad to be here. Thank you. So, for starters, how long have you been a part of the Appalachian Festival? I've been there since the beginning. We just finished our 10th annual anniversary year, I guess. So I've been involved 10 years now. Wow, that's a really long time. It is a long time, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and what exactly was it that got you involved with the festival? Well, I think that goes back to the work that I've been doing in the region. At that point in time, I had spent a lot of time documenting traditional arts and traditional music in Western Maryland and the surrounding region of West Virginia and Southwestern Pennsylvania. And I was talking to folks with the cultural event series and we started thinking about, wouldn't it be nice if we had some sort of venue where we could bring all of these people that I've been meeting together and we could really kind of show off what we have to offer in Western Maryland with regard to traditional arts. So the conversation started in that way and we thought we we do a little festival and I've been involved in festivals before numerous festivals so I knew what I was getting myself into at the time I don't think the cultural event series quite knew what they were getting themselves into but we put together the first event and we called it the first annual Frostburg State University Appalachian Festival and I felt, wow, if we're going to call it annual, that means this isn't a one-shot deal. We're going to have to continue to do this year after year after year. And that's exactly what's happened. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> so what would you say is your favorite part of the Appalachian Festival? It's really hard for me to answer that question. I think the music probably is what I most enjoy. I have a great time working with the musicians and scheduling the music and trying to figure out how we can have a, a kind of a good balance between bluegrass music and old time music and traditional Irish music and Scottish music that you also find in the region. I even like to throw some Appalachian blues in there as well. So it's a lot of fun to be able to put that musical lineup together. And I think that's what people are attracted to when they come to the festival. You know, we started out with one music stage. Now we have two music stages, but we have multiple venues because we have music going on in the chapel area um, and we have the two stages going on simultaneously. And even in our folkways tent, we do a lot of music and dance in the folkways tent. So at any given time, there could be four different musical performances happening at the festival simultaneously. Sounds like you have a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on, yes. <laughs> um, so in your opinion, how do you think that the Appalachian Festival benefits Frostburg as well as the greater community? Well, you know, when I came here, and I've been at Frostburg State University for nearly 11 years now, when I first came here, there was almost a reluctance to celebrate our Appalachian identity. And I think that Frostburg and the surrounding Western Maryland region really hadn't tried to capitalize on Appalachia as place. And there was a reason for that. I think, you know, for a number of years in the 20th century, when people thought about Appalachia, they thought of stereotypes of Appalachia that were pretty negative. They thought of Appalachia as being backwards and behind the times and, you know, quick for feuding and moonshine in the hills and that sort of thing. And, and I think this region tried to celebrate a more kind of industrial past. They were really proud of the coal mining in the area. Um, they were proud of starting the school and the best dressed miners, etc. So they really hadn't latched on to the idea of being Appalachia. I think we were kind of betwixt and between. And when I came here from North Carolina and I had spent a lot of time in East Tennessee, I was finding that, you know, the Appalachian culture was definitely here. We were very much a part of Appalachia. And so in a way, the Appalachian Festival was begun in order to reclaim that heritage and reclaim that association with the Appalachian Mountains and celebrate the identity. What had happened in other areas of Appalachia is they were reclaiming that concept and they were turning it into something very positive and something to be proud of. And I think that the Appalachian Festival intended to do the same for Western Maryland. And I think it's done that. I think we've been really successful in reclaiming that positive identity of Appalachia. That's really great. So, for the future, where do you see this festival going? You know, a lot of people ask me, so are we going to go into a two-day festival? What are we going to do? And I just don't know. I mean, pretty much we have a programming committee, but I'm the one who puts most of it together. So I feel like we have probably done as much as we can do at this point in time without going into an extra day. 
So I think my hope is that we'll just continue doing what we've been doing. We're a three-day event. I want to grow the festival, grow the audience, and really focus on having a solid audience for all of our performers. And is there any other comments that you'd like to leave us with? Well, I just hope that everyone will come out for the festival. We're always the third weekend of September, so it's easy to mark your calendar and make plans to attend. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in, and we really do appreciate your time. Thanks for inviting me. Frostburg recently had a facelift. Let's take a look at what FSU student Paris Ashley created for the town. Field reporter Wayne Kiefer has more. In an effort to beautify the city of Frostburg, Frostburg State University student Paris Ashley painted a mural on one of the buildings just off of Main Street. This was a historic event in the city's history, being the first major public art installation in downtown. This project took Paris nine weeks to complete. Here you can see some of the progress that Paris made from start to finish. The mural features the Frostburg Library, Phalanger's Hotel Gunter, a church spire, a bicyclist, red, white, and blue birds, as well as the Appalachian Mountains. Art is an important part of the community, and Frostburg State University has many talented artists to offer. Paris Ashley has kept that tradition alive with his outstanding mural. And for the Frostburg Experience, I'm Wayne Kiefer. Thanks, Wayne. When we return, Menuet will be joined in the studio by Paris Ashley. He'll tell us more about the creative process involved in creating this beautiful mural. Please stay tuned. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. I'm joined in the studio with Paris Ashley, the FSU art student who designed and created the mural we just saw. Welcome to the show, Paris. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. What is your inspiration behind the mural? I'm kind of an early riser. Mm -hmm. I like to get up in the morning to meet the sun, and before just before the sun com comes up, there's this magical moment when you can hear the birds, come, sort of the chatter of the birds rising over the mountainside. And that's what really inspired that mural. That's awesome. So what are you most pleased about, about this piece of work? I'm glad that I could get it done in time before mm -hmm. it got too cold. I'm especially glad about that. Um, I'm, I especially like the response and the encouragement I've gotten from people in town and from FSU. It's gotten me a lot of attention, which I'm very grateful for. That's great. What is your inspiration behind the other murals and where can they be found? At the Frostburg Pool, my inspiration was just that I love it so much. Mm -hmm. And I love animals and I love painting. and that mural, you'll notice when you take a look at it that there are uh, so many different animals there um, and I try to make them as cute as possible. I was, it just sort of took me back to being a kid 
And so the Frostburg Pool Mural is definitely my favorite one. That can be found down on Water Street, sort of down into town. If you go to school here, you may not see it very often, but it is down there. Um, also at Wild Things, was, um, there's a mural there that's about 10 feet by 8 feet. Mm -hmm. And that was the first painting that I did. Wow. Um, the first paid mural that I did as a professional mm -hmm. artist. That's great. Are there any other projects that you're working on, like any major product, projects? I just started a mural for a new client, the new owners of Queen City Creamery in Cumberland, and that should be a pretty amazing project. I'm putting a lot into it. It's a nighttime view of a bistro in downtown Cumberland, and it will include a few buildings there and whatever special effects I can throw in. That's great. Paris, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. You're very welcome. That's all we have for today's show. I want to thank our guests, Paris Ashley, Kara Rogers Thomas, Natalia Buda, Tom Matthews, and Christine Steinbrunner. For Amanda Faverty, I'm Minuet Silver. Thank you for joining us and be sure to catch the next episode of the Frostberg Experience.